So, I want you, after this talk, to love TypeScript as you love parties. <laughs> and uh, I'll try to argue you why you want to invest your time to learn another new technology, language, compiler, and so on. Uh, before we start, let me say a few words about who am I. Uh, my name is Vitaly. I'm Ukrainian that lives in Poland for the last two years. I work in an outsourcing company and mostly on banking projects. Huge enterprises, we're building a lot of internal platforms for them. And for the last two years we're doing this with Angular, Angular 2 and TypeScript. Uh, also, I participate in as a mentor on events called NG Girls, where we're training uh, women uh, that uh, want to be involved in IT and help them to get started with it. Also, I have a few open source projects, uh, not so big, but have some fun with them. And uh, if you will have any questions, you can reach me out on Twitter. Here's my Twitter handle. I have some blog posts, mostly of them uh, about Houdini these days. And... Uh, also, feel free to have a chat here. So, what are you going to speak today? So, what the hell is this TypeScript? What is the language or compiler or whatever it is? Uh, then I want to introduce type system used in TypeScript. Then we move on for how to get started with this TypeScript. Uh, what tool is available and how to integrate it as well with uh, some frameworks and backend stuff. So, what is TypeScript? TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Uh, it's not really a new language, but it's JavaScript with type system on it. We will see it a little bit later. Uh, why we want to use such technology? Uh, some trivial problem. We have a function that accepts two arguments, A and B, and you want to uh, have a sum of these uh, items. So you uh, later on call in your code this function, add two and three, and it returns you a number. It's great, it's working as expected, but nobody stops you to use uh, strings uh, as an argument for this function. And in the second example, we got 11, uh, and it could be not expected behavior of this function. So, and to look deeper on such problem, I want you to play some game. JavaScript expression trivia. So, the first one. Object literal plus another object literal. What will be the result of this expression? Anybody? Raise your hands. Object, object. Sure, this ugly string. Object, 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 object. So yeah, next one. One number plus plus string number. Yeah, exactly. Second string will be converted to number. Next one. Array with element 1 and uh, array with element 2. What will be? Sure, string 12. And it's not something unexpected because it just follow our specification, ECMAScript. And to avoid such uh, unexpected behaviors, you need to know algorithms behind this uh, specification, how they used. Uh, and also, you want to know what arguments pass to your function. On the other hand, uh, we can't say that our function works wrong if we haven't documented the right behavior. There is no defects until we have specification for functionality. And one possible solution to document our code in JavaScript is using JSDoc. It's special 
uh, comments uh, and we can provide some description, uh, types for our arguments and return type as well. Uh, but it has its own trade-offs. First of all, it's too verbose. You need to type this. Of course, uh, our smart IDEs give us helpers. You just start to type uh, <coughs> comments for your function and it completes the, uh, some placeholder for your JS doc. But anyway, when upgrading your code, you need to upgrade and maintain JS doc as well. Uh, nothing worse when you have wrong documentation for your code. So it's even worse than we have uh, no documentation at all. And uh, uh, anyway, nothing stops you at runtime to use your functions in the wrong way. So what's TypeScript? In the core of TypeScript is just JavaScript. And also in the, uh, why it's called superset of JavaScript, because it includes all proposals to specification uh, up to stage three. And in addition to all these ECMAScript features, we have type system itself. So we can easily say that any valid type script, uh, JavaScript, sorry, is a valid TypeScript already. Uh, when we are speaking about new features that are available in TypeScript, uh, we can, for example, show async await just, just arrived uh, to specification to the standard last year, or decorator that stay as proposal for so many years and has, hasn't standardized yet, or static uh, properties that also arrive in ES 2015. But What's the reason to use TypeScript? And the biggest uh, reason is to use it for some big project where a lot of developers involved and uh, nobody cares about JS documentation, but we need to know what to pass to some method, how to use it and so on. Uh, as uh, features, we got uh, also static analysis that could reduce our error rate at compilation time. So if we are uh, using TypeScript and trying to pass wrong uh, arguments to our function and later on in our code, we will get the error and our code won't be transpiled to ECMAScript. And uh, also, uh, TypeScript builds uh, it's not just rec apps uh, replacement of code. It builds whole abstract syntax tree of your code. So it's analyzable and it's easier to maintain it and uh, refactor it as uh, TypeScript know all about your symbols used. So what is the magic behind this TypeScript type system? Uh, first of all, I want to show how to declare type for variables. And it's pretty simple. You just declare your variable name, type uh, double colon, and type the type <laughs> itself. So the first type is a huge, huge cheat, is the type any. And by default, TypeScript uh, assumes that uh, if you don't specify type for your variable, it's of type any. And it allows you to assign any value to this variable. And no errors come. And I want you to not really use this uh, any type, because you're losing a lot of TypeScript ecosystem uh, while using this kind of cheat. So next. It covers all primitive types of JavaScript, like booleans, numbers, strings, undefined, null, object. And you can see in these examples, you declare the variable and specify its type and assign it value or not. Uh, while I say, if you not assign a value to a variable, it is undefined and you can a restrict TypeScript to check undefined and nulls with option called strict null checks. And in this case, you need to explicitly uh, recognize that variable could be of type undefined or null. 
it's really awesome to use in functional programming, especially. Uh, also, it covers new types that come to ECMAScript, uh, like maps, sets, proxies, symbols. And in these examples with maps, uh, I could show that we don't need to uh, specify type uh, when we are assigning the value, if we use only this type for it. Uh, for example, when I say uh, assigning map to variable, I say that this variable will be of type of map. Uh, really special object in JavaScript, function. And TypeScript covers us with interfaces for functions. It's just function. Uh, and again, it's some kind of cheat because it allows you to assign any function to your variable. Better to define some interface of your function, like in the second example, we're defining that we want to have one argument of type of number and our function will return type of number. Uh, also, we can document uh, uh, functions uh, declared with function keyword. We can specify types for each argument and then return type. Uh, and if function doesn't return anything, we specify that it returns undefined, void. Uh, even more, uh, for example, we have some uh, error handler that never return any value, just throws an error. And we can write that this function will return type never. Arrays, another kind of objects. So there is a uh, few ways to declare arrays. Uh, first one is to write array explicitly and pass uh, uh, each item type inside generic. Uh, but more widely used in JavaScript community, second shorter variant, when we declare in type and uh, writing like uh, array literal to specify that it will be list of numbers. Uh, also, we can specify that we want to have a uh, tulip, that the list of fixed lengths and fixed uh, types of items, and these items should have restrict order. Like in this example, we specify that we want to have a list of lengths of three, and the first value should be string, second number, and third boolean. Something like this. So, enums. They are not available in ECMAScript standard, but uh, guys with background from Java or C Sharp are really familiar with them. And it's just enumeration of uh, keys with values. By default, these values are numeric starting from zero, but we can use them uh, strings as the values for these keys. And, uh, after transpilation, these enums become just simple objects with both keys and values swapped inside. Uh, the second example is how uh, in our team we usually define action types for Redux, like enum, and use them later on. Interfaces, to describe in some our custom objects with fields. We can describe f uh, fields, uh, set uh, if they should be optional, uh, set the type of each field. Then we can uh, create more complex interfaces with uh, extending our interfaces, combining them and specifying the types. Abstract classes, some uh, implementation that really don't exist and we can use later on in our classes. It's also features that not available in ECMAScript, at least yet. Union types. We can specify that we want variable to have just some uh, restricted primitive values, like in this example. We want our literal type to have values only uh, val1 and val2 or we can uh, gather a few interfaces in one union type. Uh, ag again, in Redux, we usually do this for providing union type for our reducer function. So we're gathering all our actions in one type 
and then this type used inside uh, Redux reducer. Partials. Uh, when I discuss this uh, uh, with C sharp guys, they also have partials. They find it really useful, uh, useless for them in C sharp. But in JavaScript, it really works fine, uh, at least in some functional style programming. Uh, let's imagine that we have some reusable callback for sort. Uh, array method and we don't care about all properties available on objects we want to sort objects by date field so we specify the type partial type that uh, means that we want to pass any object that has date field inside of type of date and we need want to get the time for this field and compare and sort by this field uh, f really, really awesome feature that come out of a box with TypeScript. Uh, they covered whole DOM APIs with interfaces. So we have all HTML elements, uh, base uh, interface, and more specific one for, uh, for example, HTML button element. And we can use them. And in our ID, we get suggestions about which properties and methods available in this uh, button. Uh, later on, we can add event listener and specify that our event is a mouse event. And then we got that uh, this event could have pre-event default method, it can uh, have page uh, x, page y properties, and so on. Uh, that's not all the types available in TypeScript. There are a lot of uh, helpers uh, like read-only and so on. So. I can't cover them all now, but you can visit the docs and they have really great uh, documentation with all examples available. And new features uh, are still coming to new versions of TypeScript uh, because more people using TypeScript, uh, more, uh, more specific cases exist and uh, TypeScript creators working to solve these problems. So that's all good, but how to start using TypeScript, at least how to try it. And the easiest way to try it directly in your browser. Just visit a uh, playground created on TypeScript website, and you can st try to type some TypeScript on the left hand, and you will get compiled JavaScript on the right hand. Uh, like here, we write in some class and it will be transpiled to just ECMAScript 5 constructor function for us. Uh, so it's the f first place you should try TypeScript in general. IDEs and text editor support. And the support is pretty good because all major uh, widely used uh, text editors and IDEs have plugins for uh, TypeScript. Even more, there is no wonder, of course, but uh, Visual Studio Code made by Microsoft have TypeScript inside it out of a box. They have all uh, TypeScript language services working for you and you want to install anything. Uh, if you want to try to migrate your existing code base to TypeScript, uh, here is a Mr. Capitan. He says really strict f features. You can just uh, change the extension of your files from JS to TS, and you already done. You got the TypeScript, because any valid JavaScript is already TypeScript, but without types. <laughs> but uh, to get involved with type system, we need some tooling. and. First thing you can do in Visual Studio Code, you can enable typing checks inside Visual Studio Code with special command, add TS check on top of your JavaScript file. And it will try to uh, understand what types of your function are and uh, will warn. For example, uh, in our first example with JS doc, it reads JS docs and it sees that 
you should use only numbers as an arguments and it will highlight with error uh, wrong use usages of this function. Uh, but TypeScript comes with uh, to CLI tool called TSC that stands for TypeScript Compiler. And you can install it from NPM, uh, for example, globally, and you will get this command available in your terminal. And to get work in this compiler, you need special configuration called tsconfigjson. Uh, but you can generate it with TypeScript compiler, passing the init uh, argument inside. So you run in tsc init, and it creates this configuration file for you. Then you can run compiler on your project files. Like in this example, you provide in glob to uh, compile all TypeScript files inside your folder, my project. How this configuration might look? This is the default one generated by TSC init. And the main thing here is the target property. That means which version of ECMAScript you want to receive after TypeScript compiler run. Uh, for example, it could be ES5 because we need to support all browsers or we want our code to be executed by Googlebot, uh, which hasn't support for ES6 features. Uh, but you can specify uh, more modern standard versions as well. And other main uh, configuration arguments is the output here. Well, uh, your uh, JavaScript files will be created and type roots. Type roots it stands for lookup for library types, if any available. And usually they uh, lives inside node modules at types folder. Uh, it's created by another open source project. We will see it later on. Uh, one way to use TypeScript with Webpack, we have official TS loader and not so official awesome TypeScript loader, AT loader. Uh, how many of you can write uh, webpub config without looking at the docs? <laughs> Any Sean Larkin here? No? So, yeah. It's not so good when you need just to try some feature. You won't waste time on bundler configuration. Or you might have only backend experience and just want to try this stuff. Uh, in this case, I would like to recommend to use Parcel. It has the TypeScript uh, support out of a box, and this is the bundler that has zero configuration. So you just install it and run the command. Uh, parcel builds uh, our index file, and it grabs all resources and bundles them for you. So it's uh, working great for just trying some stuff. So just check it out. Uh, this is another awesome tool created by Yuri Shaket. Uh, he created a tool called TypeViz. And what it does, it runs the TypeScript ST builder on your JavaScript code base and trying to predict all types of your code. So it tried to parse the Something similar that TS check inside Visual Studio Code doing, but it also modifies your code base and adding these type definitions for you. Uh, of course, it can't uh, cover whole your uh, JavaScript code with f f uh, uh, TypeScript definitions, but at least it's a good starting point for uh, legacy code migration. Uh, we can't live without third-party libraries in our code. It could be D3 or uh, whatever, another library. And for this, we have big project called Definitely Typed. And this is a huge repository of type definitions for almost all famous uh, JavaScript libraries, like React, D3, Node.js itself, and so on. And this tool creates this folder at types inside your node modules and puts these type definitions for you. Then, uh, in TypeScript, 
uh, it looks for these type definitions and uh, suggests you about types, method signatures, and so on. And as far as I know, it's one of the most contributed projects on GitHub in general. So it's pretty cool. But also I see the trend that uh, a lot of new libraries come in for this TypeScript support out of a box. Uh, because uh, it's easier to change the type definitions uh, when you uh, introduce a new version of your code instead the, the, the pushing changes to another repository, wait for pull request approve and so on. Next thing, frameworks. So how we can use TypeScript with most of widely used frameworks? And first of them, of course, Angular. Google and Microsoft gather together and introduce our Angular with TypeScript. First time they tried to create uh, ability to use Angular without TypeScript. But for now, I think they have only do documentation in TypeScript and whole framework even written in TypeScript. So it supports out of the box. They have this tool called Angular CLI that uh, creates a scaffold project for you, configure a webpack bundler and all this stuff. So nothing to do there. You just uh, create new Angular project and use it out of the box. React. For React, there is type definitions uh, in definitely type project. You can install it and use in React. So uh, you can achieve, for example, uh, strictly typed uh, properties and state for your components. And you can restrict this state to be read-only, to not change any property directly in React, uh, but only with set uh, state method. Uh, you can then extend the React component and pass these uh, interfaces for properties and for state inside this uh, component as generic. Uh, you can use decorators to bind event handlers, for example, or another helper stuff. Uh, decorators under the hood is just mixing functions that wraps your method or class or uh, property and add additional behavior to them. And the best thing, you can use GSX, that TypeScript for GSX, and you have all type definitions inside your render method. Uh, all uh, uh, methods available for you. And if something going wrong, you pass in wrong uh, property type or not passing all required properties to components, you will get the error and you, your code won't to compile. So you can uh, uh, predict the errors before they come to runtime. And if you're using some third party components uh, and they come with the TypeScript definitions, they also will help you to use uh, these components in the right way, how it's written. Vue.js has pretty good support for TypeScript and it looks really like Angular. They have the same decorator for a component. You can pass template and you just create a class that extends view. So nothing to do there. Uh, of course, it's a huge topic about TypeScript and uh, uh, frameworks, and I would like to recommend uh, Medium blog posts by my friend, uh, Martin Hochel. He is GDE from Prague, and he created a bunch of content about how to use TypeScript with React, how to use TypeScript with Angular, how to uh, uh, strictly type your Redux, and uh, Really, really awesome content, how to uh, use the same Redux code base for both Angular and React and so on. Just check it out, he has a really good content. Integrations, integrations with backend side uh, that will help us to collaborate with our friends <laughs> on the other side of stack. So the f most big uh, features that we can achieve. We can get strictly typed 
uh, appearance interfaces. So, <coughs> like in this example, we have some uh, RESTful endpoint, and we have generated TypeScript interface for that. And then we specify that the response from backend should be of this type. Uh, and this interface should be generated on backend build step. Uh, for example, when Java built with Maiden or C Sharp, and it could, I'll show it later on, it could generate these interfaces for you. Then in your client side code, you import in these interfaces. They could be published in your local NPM, for example, like a library, or just shared in the repository, whatever. And when something changed, uh, on API calls on backend side, and you grab the new version of interface, you will get all errors that something changed and it not uh, couldn't be used with old version. So you need to modify your uh, client side code. Uh, also, I got that guys from Java and C Sharp feels uh, much more comfortable with TypeScript uh, and they could be involved in writing client side code as well. So, when we are speaking about Node.js, Capitan says that we can just use TypeScript for Node.js project. And it has uh, one trade off that you need additional bits, build step on Node.js application to transpile your TypeScript to uh, JavaScript for Node. But on the other hand, you have shared interfaces for client and backend, and you haven't nothing to do with that. For Java, C Sharp, uh, not sure about PHP, uh, you can generate JSON schema that's the open source standard to documenting uh, RESTful endpoints. And from this JSON schema, you can create TypeScript interfaces with tools like JSON schema to TypeScript. Uh, it works not ideal. It sometimes stacks on some uh, complex types, but at least it can cover uh, basic primitive types like integers, numbers, strings, and so on. So is, this is the one way how to achieve, achieve strictly typed RESTful interface. So try it at home, and I hope it will work for you. So that's all that I have. Uh, be strictly typed and love TypeScript like you love parties.